the team owner actually stole that money, revoked his visa, and had him deported. Hello, Ryan. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Thank you, you for having us me. Yeah. Do you want to tell everyone who you are and a little bit about yourself and why you know what you're talking about? <laughs> sure. So I uh, am your agent and your lawyer. Uh, I've been doing working in this industry oh, just shy of, of, of about a decade. So we started my own firm uh, about nine uh -huh. years ago. Uh, right out of law school, and I started working with video game developers. So I started working mm -hmm. with all the people actually making the games everybody plays on Twitch. Uh, candy Crush was going around suing everybody over the word candy and saga. And uh, I worked with a bunch of indie devs on Reddit to basically help them for free, but fight Candy Crush. Uh, and we mm -hmm. released a white paper with the IGDA. Reddit started calling me video game attorney. I got a large Twitter following, and I ran with it. Uh, and then I had wow. a, 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 one of the leading video game firms in the space uh, and quickly that turned into doing a lot of work in esports on youtube and and with uh twitch streamers such as yourself uh and about five mm -hmm. years ago i opened up evolve talent agency which represents uh again you know obviously anita uh xqc uh austin etc a lot of people and most of the top players in in various esports like sinatra and super and and you know the list goes on but anything that's happened in this space i've probably seen or dealt with it uh whether it's nonsense in contracts, DMCAs, uh, stalkers, everything in between we've worked with at the firm or the agency. Uh, so happy to talk about any of it and share the knowledge. Well, I've been so excited about this talk with you because um, when I initially came to you and we, we kind of had a little talk about what we might talk about, I was riveted by all of your stories and all of the things that you've had to experience in your line of work. I had no idea that this was a niche, let alone that it was such an interesting aspect of streams and content creation, because you're kind of like one of those bedrocks that, you know, holds everything together. Without you guys doing what you do, we would be screwed. Um, and yet most people don't even know what you're doing. Most viewers have no idea what part that you contribute and just how amazing the work that you're doing is. So I'm glad I get to show everyone the kinds of things that you get up to. But before we roll into that, I was going to ask you if you were able to summarize the recent decisions regarding Twitch language. Why are people mad? What do you think about it? And what are the legal implications? The new policy does include guidelines that say making any derogatory statements about another person's perceived sexual practices, and that does include negatively targeting another person with sexually focused terms. So using terms like simp, um, incel or virgin is an insult uh, to negatively refer to another person's sexual activity is not allowed under this new policy. Um, and in addition to the policy change, we're also proactively denying emotes that include the term sim and we'll remove them when reported and we'll keep doing that once the policy changes. Starting heavy, I like it. Uh, no, so that, mm -hmm. listen, I'm a strong advocate for freedom of speech as I think most people are nowadays. And I think uh, it's important to be able to yeah. express yourself and share your opinions. However, those opinions have consequences and Twitch is not a public space. Twitch is not bound by the constitution. It's the same as if you go into Walmart and they say, hey, you can't scream the F word in here. They have that right. It's like private property. Twitch is a Fuck. private club and you all sign partnership agreements. You all uh, agree to the terms of service, you will, uh, et cetera. And as a result, you have to agree to those terms of, of conduct. Uh, Twitch is in a rough spot, right? Because they have to make sure some things are not appropriate. Uh, there's been uh, terrible problems with racism, misogyny, everything else on Twitch. And for them uh -huh. to come with a blanket list of these are the words you can't say, that what job sucks. No one wants to uh -huh. sit there and come up with every word that's not OK, because where do you stop? Where do you start? Uh, and, and that's uh -huh. a really kind of impossible task that they've been uh, dealt having to do as one of the most popular platforms around right now. However, uh, I don't necessarily agree with all the decisions there. But it's interesting because in my line of work, we have to we represent the talent, right? I don't work with the teams. I don't work with the platforms. We represent talent. And as a what talent a representative, it's important to make sure that when they do say something that might have breached the terms of service if they do break a rule that they didn't even know was a rule we're the ones filing those appeals we're the ones arguing with the platforms and everything else what i can say is twitch is not a group of evil people trying to ruin everybody's careers they're trying to stay relevant they're trying to not uh destroy their community they're trying to remain as positive a place as possible and that really is an impossible battle with 
look at all the other things that have already come and died, mixer, caffeine, et cetera. Uh, it's really hard to stand out in this space and do it the right way. Uh, so I know that's not an answer, and I promise I'm not a lawyer where I just answer everything. It depends. Uh, but it depends. I mean, these these <laughs> rules uh, and words really do affect people a certain okay. way. And people shouldn't have to be there in a, in a community wow. where they they don't uh, where they're getting hurt or or offended constantly. However, there's also the ability to not watch that stream. So you know, if mm -hmm. if you're watching a stream or using a word that offends you, watch something else. Uh, you know, that's a yeah. pretty simple solution as well. But again, there has to be a line. It's just about where that line is. Well, yeah, that's a really thorough and absolutely brilliant answer. I mean, do you think that these guidelines are a good idea? Yeah, I think they're so I, not these specific words. I think having words that are are just categorically not OK is OK. Racial slurs, for example, when uh -huh. Xbox Live came on and still today, you go on there and you just hear someone spamming racial slurs at you over and over again. It's pretty easy to put a, 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 a bot in chats that basically says if you're spamming this word over and over or even use it once, you're banned. And mm -hmm. there is a, a time and place for that with certain words. I do think the list has gotten a bit ridiculous but uh you know i also dealt with the overwatch league when they banned pepe the frog and things like that uh you mm -hmm. know there's there's always kind of missteps here and then they recalibrate they, li they do listen to the community for what it's worth uh but mm -hmm. you certainly don't like seeing some of the bans coming down for uh simple infringements on on something like this so as a lawyer for years you probably have some horror stories um i was wondering if you could give a few examples without naming names yeah for sure i uh, and even sometimes I can name names. Uh, but uh, one of the first things I dealt with uh, in esports was a player from the Middle East who came here on a visa with a team. He won about $100,000, maybe uh, right about $100,000 uh, in a tournament. And rather than pay him the prize money, uh, the team owner actually stole that money, revoked his visa and had him deported. So rather than celebrate with his family with this money that would have changed his life, he spent the night in a holding cell. And I had to get on the phone with the, the tournament organizers and the publisher and, and try to fix all that. Uh, but that was like week one in esports in Dota. Uh, we've seen terrible things recently, too, or more recently, I should say. Uh, in League of Legends, we had a top player who had a wrist injury and was went to the doctor. The doctor basically said, listen, your wrist is going to be fine in two weeks. Just rest. Don't play. However, that weekend was a playoff match. So the team mm -hmm. told this player at two in the morning, fire your lawyer and sign this doctor waiver and agree to play this weekend or you're out. You're off the team. You're out of the house. Uh, that's straight up oh. criminal, let alone immoral. Uh, and I got an email at 2 a.m. at my time in New York uh, and spent all night fighting this with uh, Twitch in Europe and the team and everyone else. Uh, but it's it's events like that that I don't think people see because this stuff doesn't hit the 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 the, the media because a everything I work on for the most part has attorney client privilege so I cannot go speak about it uh, and b these organizations have so much money behind them that they squash this content as wow. quick as they can as well uh, but that's not to say teams are evil or organized or orgs are evil they're not uh, especially nowadays most of the really bad actors are out of the space uh, but it's it's you know it's largely in part due to the awesome people that I'm lucky to work with that negotiate these contracts and make sure their rights are in there and make sure that uh, a team cannot take your prize money. A team has to pay you. A team has to give you the living arrangements uh, because without all that, the players used to sign up and just sign their contracts and then get screwed. Uh, so that's that's what we're here for to fight. A lot of people think an agent just negotiates your deal once a year. No, we're also the ones that you call when you're getting screwed over. And it's it's when you get benched or you get cut, your team, who was your best friend yesterday, suddenly they're not such your best friend anymore because uh, now you're a drain on their bottom line and their salary. Uh, that's, again, when your agent always has your back because, A, take morals aside, your agent's only winning if you're making money. That's how, how we make money. However, at the same time, we also, I think, have proven at this point that evolved in the, the people I'm, I'm lucky to work with, like Sebastian, Chris, oh, wow. Penny, et cetera, you know, they die fighting for these people. And it's it's uh, everyone who works for me could be making more money somewhere else. But they genuinely care about this industry. They genuinely care about these players. And it's, uh, you know, it's exciting to see we're not negotiating industry standard because like you would in movies or film or TV, like we don't go into it and ask for industry standard. We're very lucky that we're setting industry standard. There was no lawyers in esports before us. There was no agents in esports that charge reasonable rates or were realistic before us. There's still, there's plenty others now. There's a lot of really good ones in the space now. It's not just my law firm and not just my agency, uh, but we were one of the first and, and we've seen a lot of progress uh, 
since we started seeing those original contracts. Uh, I, I was wondering if you have any stalker related stories in particular, because I firsthand know that this is a really prevalent problem on Twitch. And I'd imagine as someone who's had to represent and kind of deal with the safety of people in certain aspects that you probably have seen firsthand, just how bad it can be. For sure. Uh, it, so what I think gets lost a lot of times for, for many streamers and many influencers is just how deep the connection is on the other side of the screen. Meaning there are many fans of yours, of others that, you know, treat in, in their head, you're one of their closest friends and they, they don't process that thought. They're not saying oh. Anita is my closest friend. What they're saying is you are such a part of their life though. It's like, uh, I listen to podcasts whenever I commute to work. I, I listen to a, a certain podcast and I am, I hear those voices so much. I hear those names so much that they just kind of, I forget we've never met, you know, I forget that they're just not actually part of my life. And I think most mm -hmm. Twitch streamers kind of forget that that's how a lot of their viewers are, where you're a part of what their content is. You're part of their day. They they care. They genuinely care about you. Uh, mm -hmm. However, there are people, obviously, with with a plethora of different disorders, disabilities, or sometimes just not very good people that take that to an unhealthy place, and that they stop yeah. talking to other people. They stop dating. They do it. So many different things we've seen where they become obsessed with the person they're watching. Uh, and it's genuinely scary. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, I don't want to scare you or anybody. I mean, but it's, it's just, it's upsetting to see. Scare me daddy. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. So we, no, we, but we work with, uh, the LAPD and the celebrity victims unit. We work with the FBI. We work with so many different places, uh, that basically come and, and help stop this before it starts, you know, find these people, investigate who they are, everything else, and really, uh, understand uh -huh what's going on there uh, before it becomes a real problem. And I think mm -hmm. what, what our role is, is as lawyers is to kind of, before it gets to the level where you need the police or the FBI, that's, we do the restraining orders. Uh, we, send, we send over the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the demand letters, the, the scary lawyer letters that nobody wants to get, you know, we write those. Uh, we also mm -hmm. have a great team here that actually finds who it is, usually. Sometimes they're they're crazy uh, good at hiding themselves, and we need to get third-party investigators or forensic uh, people to come in and look at it. Uh, but it, it it is something that I think it is very easy to write a death threat. It's very wow. easy to send a scary message. And I, especially earlier in this industry, even myself, I mean, uh, personally, I would get death threats all the time. And I know a lot of streamers do and things like that. Uh, I, I know I have a Christmas tree, but R2-D2 has a yarmulke. Uh, I'm Jewish, and I got a lot of anti-Semitic threats when I started and things like that when people would find out. Uh, but that okay. is, there's a difference between, like, idiot troll versus, like, scary stalker. And that's what our job is, A, when a, when a client comes to us and says, hey, we ha I have a stalker problem. I have an issue here. Step one is figuring right. out what is the issue. You know, how how real is this? What is Is this something that is just looks scary or is this something that is scary? Uh, and we work with them to, to figure that out and then as necessary bring in the courts for restraining orders or uh the, the uh uh police or fbi etc um but those people don't win you know the 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 stalkers the trolls the people <laughs> swatting they're it's becoming easier to find them even though they think they're getting smarter about hiding themselves and you know we have liam neeson basically who works for us that will absolutely find you no matter how well you hide uh and that <laughs> leads to uh, this problem curving itself because they're swatting, for example, has, has yeah. stopped a bit. It's still a terrible problem and it's extremely illegal, but you see people getting extremely long prison sentences from it and, and things like that as they should, uh, you know, yeah. and, and uh, hopefully we're seeing more deterrence like that, that will prevent future problems. But uh, I, I, it's a roundabout answer, but I mean, yes, it's, it's a real issue. It's something that I think people don't think a ton about. Uh, you forget, that that troll in chat sometimes doesn't forget about you at night and is sitting there stewing and angry and angry. And then the next day sends you the whatever letter they send. Uh, you know, it's one thing to go to bed pissed off from a Dota fight, or a Dota match. It's another thing to wake up and still be angry about it. That That's when you should mm. call a therapist and, and work out your problems there. I mean, I straight up stop talking to my friends for a night when we lose Dota. But again, in the morning, we're best friends again. So that that's a good uh -huh. litmus test for yourself if you're watching this. Of if you're if you're staying that angry that long over something on the internet, go go get some help. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've seen a lot of that firsthand. Uh, you know, being a streamer can be very dangerous because people do develop parasocial relationships. And, you know, I think we're still at an early stage in developing good law and good protection for people who create content. And it's overdue. Like, I can't help but think, you know, content creators generate millions, perhaps billions in tax revenue. And yet the services currently in place to protect us are just not good enough. Um, well, that is, is, you hit the nail on the head. So that, think of the people in charge right now. Most, you know, mm -hmm. the, how old they are, where, what their backgrounds are, everything else. Most of them can't work their email, let alone figure out what Twitch is. So I think as we're getting people in the younger generation, getting into politics, people watching this hopefully are getting inspired in, 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 in their own lives, not from this, but I mean, just like generally about the problems here, there's room for the wow. next generation of politicians and, and people who work in the space that actually understand the internet and actually understand where all this money is being made, where all these lives are being affected, where all these kids are getting their content. Uh, you know, we still have politicians just starting to talk about loot boxes. Loot boxes have been a problem <laughs> for 10 years and, and they're just starting to have those conversations. So I unfortunately think the Twitch conversation is a bit off from the lobbyists and the politicians and the legislators, uh, but it'll get there for sure. And to be frank, I mean, the people killing it like you right now are going to be the ones cited in law school textbooks eventually is like, well, here's how Anita built her stream. Here's what we need to look out for. Here's how we can protect her better, make her fan safer, everything else. That will all be examined. And it's going to be, uh, you know, super interesting to see what they do with it. Yeah, I do kind of, I, I really do see kind of it as like a, I don't know, like a gold rush almost, because there's so much money to be made on this platform, but it's uncharted territory. And there are so many obstacles that people didn't anticipate that are, um, you know, that there isn't law to protect against, that there isn't policies to, you know, compete with, you know, the toxicity, the stalking, the, the con artists, the things that you described, like that poor lad who got deported, so they didn't have to pay him his money, you know, his prize money, all of this sort of stuff. I feel like it's just a rep rep representation of how it's just early days in the industry. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, we are the ones taking part at the time with the most horror stories. And we have, you know, we have to take the most risks to kind of lay the foundation and the path for everybody to come after when things have been smoothed out and i think it you know what you're doing is making it possible for people like me especially to come and stream because you know we need you know we we, we get toxicity but we get an extra level of toxicity on top of that when you have disabilities when you know you you have other things about you that are marginalized in society and so i can't i can't thank you enough for what you do because it makes all the difference between you know people like me being able to contribute and not um but I, are you absolutely seeing... no it's it, you guys are actually doing something you're the talented one we become agents and lawyers because we have no talent uh so you know we're just happy to help you guys and and be along for the ride it's really interesting hey, hey, what you're saying though wait no 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 wait a minute i have to cut in there because <laughs> you just told me before we we got into this you said you were winging it you had no plan and yet you've made <laughs> this out of yourself and i i i had um we've had a little chat before and you told me that you know you had a little bit of a rocky beginning getting into this job and i don't know if you feel comfortable kind of telling everyone about that and where you started because i think that the people in chat inclined to disagree with you there. I think you're incredibly talented and you've come an amazing, you've done an amazing job and, you know, tread an amazing journey too. So did you want to talk about how you got into this and, you know, where you started maybe? Yeah, and I, I super appreciate that. Uh, but I, you know, again, would trade skill sets in a second. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, 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 uh, I came from a humble beginnings, let's call it. You know, I was the white trash family in a white trash neighborhood. Every one of our cars had three tires in the driveway, one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, but I worked a lot when I was a kid. I worked at Baskin Robbins. I delivered oh. pizza. I worked at a hobby shop, uh, which is actually where I found Magic the Gathering and became a nerd. And here we are. Uh, but the, uh, but I did that kind of stuff and saved up money. And then my freshman year of college, I got a, a letter from the school basically saying you're kicked out for financial reasons. And I thought that was strange. Turns out my dad went to my bank with my junior's license and social security card, convinced the bank I was in the hospital with terminal cancer and stole all my money. He also, uh, forged my grandmother's name on the deed to the house, took all her money, uh, stole people, stole money from all these other people and basically went on the run. 
Uh, so I had a drop out of college. I got a job in a kitchen, worked 80 hours a week, bomber's burrito bar for anybody from Albany. Uh, and, uh, and you know, we, we basically, I, or I basically just worked my butt off there, got back into school, uh, had to drop out once or twice more because of the, the finances. But that's why I really uh, like working with people who come from similar struggles. And, and that's not it. I mean, just because you come from money doesn't mean you haven't struggled. You know, there's everyone has their own struggles. But I really appreciate people who overcome diversity, disability, anything else in their lives. And, and that's why when I started my law firm, I really was intent on helping people who couldn't afford lawyers. That's why I went into the game dev subreddit. Everyone in there said, there's no way I can fight Candy Crush. I cannot afford a lawyer. And I said, well, listen, I've been a lawyer for eight days, but I'll help you. I won't, I won't charge you. Uh, and it, it worked out. I, I built a, a law firm website using like stock footage from Ikea and just had a law firm. Uh, now we have 50 Hello. people who work for us and we've grown and it's, it's great. Um, and same on the agency side. I mean, there, there's just really good people that are slaving away and working their butts off in other places. Uh, you know, like you said, how the law is so different here. And so we're so in the early days of this industry legally, it's the same on the business. Uh, you know, our, our senior director of brand partnerships, Lucas, uh, comes from ICM, one of the big agencies that runs all of Hollywood. However, you know, he was wasting away there because he understood this space. He had so much talent. And we were able to bring him over here and, and let him run wild on Twitch. And, you know, he does all your deals. He does all our clients' deals. And it's been great seeing people like that kind of find their element here. Because this is, you know, we're like the island of misfit toys a bit. You know, we're, we're all the the law firms that don't understand what we do. The, the other agencies don't understand what we do. But the community understands what we do. And we understand what the community does. And that's why we're able to work with everybody and, and build cool stuff. But it's been it's been a ride from, you know, I was quite literally homeless living on my friend's couch when I started the law firm. And now uh, I have a Christmas tree. So, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's the point where you made it. It's like, yeah, I was homeless. But now look at this tree. <laughs> I'm jealous, actually. I forgot to put mine up. but I think it's a bit late now. Um, I might do, though. It's always interesting. I always have to ha I have to take bets on like how much of it's going to end up on the tree and how much of it's going to end up on the wall. But it's fun trying. <laughs> That's right. The worst thing my dad yeah. did, though, uh, way worse than anything else. The worst thing my dad did was give me this Irish face because uh, you can see how pale I get under lights and turn red. So hello. <laughs> I've actually seen people complimenting you on your rosy cheeks, actually. So, you know, chat <laughs> likes it. Chat's been I swear really I'm nice. Not, I swear I'm sober. <laughs> <laughs> He's lying. He's not. Uh, that was a tick. <laughs> probably, yeah. no, I'm kidding. <laughs> For the last couple of minutes, did you want to talk about DMCA at all? Yeah, that is great. Absolutely. DMCA, I'll give you the really quick summary. Uh, DMCA mm -hmm. is one of the most misunderstood things on the internet, but also terrible and also great. Uh, the, D yeah. the internet would not exist without the DMCA as we know it today. Uh, YouTube was kind of the main reason it was talked about and pushed forward. YouTube, under traditional law, the copyright law that's existed for hundreds of years, uh, YouTube would be liable if I uploaded Star Wars to it. So if I upload Star Wars to YouTube, uh, not only could Disney sue me, they could also sue YouTube. The DMCA basically said, we understand YouTube cannot possibly police all of the content that gets uploaded. So instead, we're going to make the burden on the rights holders. We're going to make it so Disney has to tell YouTube. And then Disney comes and basically says... We're giving you a DMCA notification, a takedown, basically saying you, someone uploaded something on your website that's infringing. The way the process works under the DMCA is they immediately have to take it down. YouTube is not allowed to listen to fair use arguments. They're not allowed to do anything. They have to take it down. Then the only, excuse me, the only remedy and rem, uh, next step for the, the, the person who uploaded it, if they do think it's fair use or anything else, is to go forward and basically uh, counter it. Now, countering, I've heard many influencers, many streamers say, just counter it, it's fine, there's no risk. Countering is a huge risk, because if you counter something, your content goes back up. And then the only remedy the rights holder has, Disney in this case, is to sue you. And I promise you, even if you, what you did is fair use, you don't want to get sued by Disney. You won't have, <laughs> fair, use, <laughs> fair use is very expensive, because it's nothing's fair use until a judge or a jury says it is. And as a result, you know, you need to basically be in a place where you're so confident it's fair use that you're they won't oh. even sue you uh but we're seeing the dmca get absolutely abused right now by the record labels because the record labels want twitch's money uh all the 
the 60 year old idiots running the music industry got stuck home with COVID and they had to stop traveling around and living their terrible music lives. And they instead were stuck with their families that they never saw. And they started realizing, oh crap, my kids is watching something all day. What is that? It's Twitch. They learned what Twitch was, started Googling it more, understood it. And now they started sending mass DMCAs and I'm sure the I don't know, but I'm sure the conversation on the back end is, hey, Twitch, pay us royalties for every song played or we're going to keep DMCAing you. Uh, and I know Twitch, again, is stuck between a rock and a hard place where they don't want to take down uh, Felix's stream or XQC stream uh, or give him a strike or anything like that. But they literally oh, have to strike his ass. Where the whole website disappears. And that's the problem with the DMCA. Uh, it is a misdemeanor. It's it's a you're you're violating perjury when you send a fraudulent DMCA. Uh, but that doesn't stop a lot of idiots from doing it. And, and like you said, it's early days. I think those people will get punished more. Uh, but Allison Rothman, my partner at the law firm, for example, Ali is currently working on a ton of cases about this. And she is, a, a, you know, intellectual property hyper genius. She's smarter than me. That's why I partnered with her. And she is, a, you know, she's currently basically uh, helping fight this. We're, we're meeting with all the relevant parties and, and hopefully we'll be part of a Lawsuit defending someone who got screwed over and will will blow up the music industry worse than Napster did. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel like Copy. you've just inspired the next generation of lawyers. Thank you so much for telling well, us all hiring. about that. <laughs> really? We're hiring. Yeah, we are. So, and we're, you know, we have, we take interns and everything else. So if you're serious about it, shoot over a resume, cover letter. Uh, you can send it to Vinny, V-I-N-N-Y, at EvolveTalent.com. Oh. That's amazing. I was literally just going to ask you where we could find you. Um, well, that's yeah, Vinny. That's you. not me. I just don't. I, I don't. I'm not going to look at all the resumes, and I ruined Vinny's life. Ha <laughs> 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 uh, But Thank no, you, you can. So much. Yeah, and I'm on Twitter at Morrison, or you can email me at Ryan at EvolveTalent.com, of course. So that was Ryan. Isn't Ryan amazing? Chat. Thank you so much. And <laughs> you uh, we're are the only one amazing. Break. And thank you for having me so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Sixteen minutes in. Okay.